Hello, welcome once again. In this video, you find the detailed explanation of the poem A Prayer for My Daughter. As the poem is too long to complete in one video, I am making it in parts. The second part will follow. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and wait for the next videos. Thank you. Hello, dear friends. Today I am going to take the poem a prayer for my daughter by W. B. William Butler Yeats. Now let me give you the brief introduction that is little background. What is the context when it is written? So this is written in 1990. So you know that from 1940 to 1980. This period was World War. Okay. This was a period of World War. Soon after, uh, this, this was a tumultuous period. There were a lot of problems in England, Wales and Ireland. You can call it as Great Britain. That time, they had a lot many problems. Especially the war. You can imagine what kind of a situations we have when we have a war. Devastation, destruction, lack of security, fear, anxiety. These all are there when there is a war. And after this, the Irish people wanted a separate land for themselves. They wanted to be independent from British rule. So there was a home rule and afterwards there was an Easter rising. So when you go through these all things you come to know. There was Easter rising, there were volunteers, thousands of volunteers were there, those who wanted to rebel against the British rule. So there was another war coming after this. He was expecting that. So in that period, just after 18, there was a little lull you can say. Though there were turbulences in the political fields, but not that much. So, so just when he wrote, the situation was very grim. Now he was in Kool Park. Gregory's, Lady Gregory's place it was. And uh, he, he used to stay there. And uh, he has a baby now whose name is Anne. Now the situation is like that. The girl, the infant is sleeping in a cradle. He sees that. And uh, outside there is a storm. And uh, it also suggests it was there of course he has seen the storm coming inside also there is a storm because he his mind is full of chaos he is too much anxious what would happen in the future there is a fear so these all are manifested in the form of anxiety so this anxiety in him in himself is as good as the storm outside. So one is one storm is outside and another storm is inside him. Now he prays God for the safety of daughter. Daughter here, of course it is addressed to daughter and but at the same time it is for her generation that is coming generation. So he wants the safety and security for the coming generation. He doesn't want that next generation should be the generation what he lived in. Because there was a, there were lot many problems they had to face. So when we face a lot many problems, at least we want that the next generation should not go through all those things. That is why he is praying for save the safety, the security and well-being of the next generation. The stanza 1 
once more the storm is blowing that is once more the unrest or straight away can take it as a war some devastation who oh, it is going to come the storm always is destructive to so bowl howling that is it is showing his presence and half it under this cradle cradle moon this is cradle moon and cover lid this represents a limited safety this is cover lid my chair sleeps on now here straight away we can make a picture of a house wherein the father is standing there is a cradle and the a small infant is sleeping so looking at that baby the father tells that is yates tells his daughter's name was annie so sleeps on there is no obstacle but gregory's foot but means here except so there is no obstacle that can withstand this storm that can stop this storm what that can stop this or hold this storm is gregory's wood because Gre this is where yates lived for a long time when he was not well he came to gregory's wood and uh, under the care of lady gregory he was there so it has been a protecting place for eights that's why he refers this so that means if at all some protection is given that can be given by gregory's wood and the one where he will wear by the haystack the haystack this is the haystack it it's like a bar and yeah? roof leveling wind we should not read it as roof leveling wind i think it is like this and roof leveling that is this haystack is up to roof level roof leveling this one wind that bread if you take it like this it will be very good wind bread on the atlantic that means the wind which started from the atlantic because that is a place where it has taken its birth the storm the storm from the atlantic can be stayed that means can be held the only little control or little protection he and the, his annie his daughter annie can have is here and uh, for an hour today if you say it's for an hour it is not just an hour when you read this you will come to know what this mean i have walked and uh, prayed i have walked and prayed because of the great bloom that is in my mind here is everything clear there's a storm outside there's a storm inside because there was uncertainty there was fear war was at foot the world war came to an end here and he has written it in 1919 so by 1918 the war was over so he says now there is a gloom because people of that age there was lot of disturbance so therefore he says there was a gloom so when the, there is a gloom and there is an anxiety there is an unrest then normally what happens a man would not sit quietly that is not possible so what does he do he goes up and down walk simply because something is going on in his mind there is a tumult in his mind so therefore he says he walked and that walk hour to me every hour every hour he it shows here all the time all the time there is anxiety what happens what will happen to my child now here child does not represent only his own child any it represents the coming generation 
so he is worried about the safety and security and the well being of the generation next generation not just for any it is not any alone thousands and lakhs of anis so he wants the safety and security for the coming generation that is what he prays he is praying for the well being of the future second stanza i have walked and prayed for this young child an hour it's not just an hour already have told you hour after hour again and again continuously and heard the sea winds scream upon the tower now this sea wind again there's a storm which is coming no now he could hear that is he is expecting another storm he is now referring this to the irish revolution and under the arches of the bridge not only on the towers even under the bridges that means everywhere this is not in one particular place that means it is going to affect each and every one and stream in the elms above the flooded stream so elms elms where are this the trees these trees elms so it is they above that so he wants to say here that everywhere this storm will be there imagine in excited reverie now reverie reverie means when you close your eyes and think imagine some situation and you think about that that is reverie or remember something coolly that is called reverie so in this reverie you imagine what you imagine that the future years had come that means what has he expected that has already come that is how he is imagining that uh, devastating time that tumultuous time that will come it has already come dancing to the frenzy to drum of the murderous innocence of the sea a beautiful juxtaposition here murderous innocence the innocence cannot be murderous but it can be now he means that the sea is calm now now you know that the sea and the, even outside also it is very very calm before this storm so he says there is a murderous innocence murderous innocence means innocence here refers to the calmness of the sea now there are no waves it is there, are, there there's no wind there there are no waves therefore it is innocent it looks very innocent because it doesn't do anything but it is murderous it is murderous when it when it raises the storm the same sea when raises the storm that becomes murderous that's why he calls it as murderous innocence from that calm and quiet atmosphere now because there is a little gap 1914 to 1918 there was a world war and these all the people were involved in the war and now after the war this is written in 1919 therefore after one year you can say that time there was a lull little calmness was there therefore he is expecting another storm to come that is another war dancing to the frenzied drum frenzied drum there is a beating with a frenzy the beating like anything continuously beating beat that is this storm or this war this unrest what is going to come that is going to dance for the drums he is expecting again a great danger for the coming generation therefore he says and he prays god to halt this and he prays 
for the safety and the security of his daughter not only the daughter daughter here represent the whole coming generation now stanza 3 may she be granted beauty she is that is any his daughter so let the god give her beauty let her be beautiful and yet not beauty to make a stranger's eye distraught that means she should not be too much beautiful if somebody is too much beautiful then everybody's eyes will be there she would be attracting each and every one so she would become the central figure wherever she goes this he doesn't want the reason behind this is he had an experience with the morgon she was so very beautiful woman and he was behind her but she was just a friend but he loved her a lot you can say it was one sided relation he loved her a lot morgon was so beautiful she and she was very proud of her beauty she lost the humility the human nature just because she was very beautiful so because of that now he is asking the god to grant or to give beauty but not too much beauty and she should not be like a morgon or hers before the looking glass hers means her beauty or it should not be when somebody becomes too much beautiful and the woman would be always standing in front of the mirror looking at herself again and again feeling more and more proud so this should not happen so she should not spend more time in front of the mirror for such being made beautiful over much that means when it is the beauty is over beauty that time this happens consider beauty a sufficient end that time these foolish women those those who are too much beautiful they think that that is the end of their achievement so they think that that is everything in life beauty is everything in life that wrong concept they have in their mind again it has come from morgan lose natural kindness and maybe the hurt revealing intimacy because of that what happens they lose their natural kindness because they are too much proud of their beauty so they lose the natural kindness what is required for being with the friends if you are a very close friend then you reveal your everything what is there inside heart revealing that means whatever is there in your mind you reveal it you tell your close friend but here it doesn't happen because you have no close friend so lose natural kindness and maybe the heart revealing intimacy intimacy means closeness that chooses right and never find a friend that means the right person you want as a friend and you want to choose so what is your first consideration that she or he must be as beautiful as you are that is the expectation we have so when you expect like this then definitely you will not get any one so you don't find you will never find a true friend this is a loss this is a loss for the most beautiful woman this is a problem with them they will never find an intimate friends so this should not happen to his any that's why he praises god not to make her too much beautiful